All right, welcome back, everybody. We're back again. Um, uh, scheduling issues and uh, illnesses, and you know how it is for Plane Traveler. And uh, Anna is going to do the recap in her character. Well, after we got back from the um, um, the, the boat and uh, retrieving the uh, uh, underwater uh, uh, items that we're supposed to retrieve. Uh, you know, we had the instead with the reavers shooting at us. But uh, when we got back to the casino, we discussed the mining operation and the threats of the reavers. Uh, there was a shrimp festival coming up, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, May was going to be front and center of, of, of her hotel there for the shrimp festival. Um, so I put uh, drones up in the air uh, and. Uh, we had all hands spying. Uh, Stu, I believe, was going to be. Uh, uh, Stu was in the the river, you know, thread that was going on, and uh, we uh, spotted some uh, people across the way, and we did, and were watching, and then we also spotted a gun, so we foiled that and gave chase to the. Uh, uh, Stu gave chase to the uh, um, the assassins along with, I believe, uh, it, was it was Tessin, right? Yeah, and uh, we um, and I put my drones up in the air and uh, directed them, followed them, and directed them. We captured uh, the uh, uh, we captured the uh, assass assassin. Uh, let's see here. And so right now we're discussing what we're going to do. Uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, Sal and Lucas are going to interrogate the captured assassin uh, and May's uh, arranged treatment for uh, the assassin just so we keep him around longer to get the information. I'm going to be checking out the, uh, trying to find more information on the afterlife project mentioned in the hack data that I, uh, that I got when we were on the station. Uh, and uh, then we want to check out the connection between Astrogen and the Reavers gang. May has a contact named Kishi who might be able to help on that. And uh, and well, let's see. And in general, I'm going to be um, anal continuing to analyze the uh, data from Astrogen Systems. Uh, Lucas is. Uh, Going to be a little more cautious with the force he uses in future encounters. <laughs> uh, one thing we that was really scary that we we read across on the uh, information was the suggestion that they were Astrogen was doing something with precursor viruses that was mentioned in the hack data, which I mean you talk about playing with fire that's ridiculous, and uh, May is going to. Um, uh, arrange a meeting with her father, and we're going to discuss the recent events and gather intelligence. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just uh, investigate the gangs, try to interpret the data, uh, try to uh, uh, interrogate the assassin. And uh, oh, and uh, Tessin got a little carried away on the shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Was not needs, doing too needs, well. That's a danger thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's pretty much what was going on. It's that it, it all seemed like an awful lot at the time, but when you boil it down, it doesn't sound like a lot went on, but a lot did. Right. Um, so uh just picking up like where we left off, right? You um we're in the middle of the kind of like the street. You've got this, these races going on um, and the streets are just packed with tourists. And um, uh, you took down the two would-be uh, assassins and the heavies, like the bodyguard guys kind of come out from May's Casino and the bodyguard guys from the casino across the way, like back off. And then May comes running out and says, you know, that one's mine. It's a war of assassins. And um, and then they just kind of 
you know, back off and pick up the, the two, you've got the one who has his leg just like totally blown apart, like trying to hold it together, kind of going into shock, like his eyes are glazing over. And then the, uh, the other one who's been stabbed in the armpit, who is kind of, you know, bleeding and then they grab them and they pick them up and they haul them into the casino. Um, and, uh, and, you know, they're like, there's nothing to see here. So this is, um, you know, it's like clan business. Um, and, and all the tourists are like, some of them are kind of like, like, oh my God, like, which is, we just witnessed like a mob war. And then some of them are like, cool, dude, we just saw a mob war, you know? Um, and, uh, but so the, what are you all doing? Are you, are you following with the, I think that you, you see them dragging these, dragging one who's bleeding really badly down the hall. Mm -hmm. And then the other one who's only bleeding a little bit. Um, but they kind of, you know, like push, push through the doors, just taking them into the casino. Um, are you all, are you all following or are you going to kind of just let them interrogate them? Oh, man. I, know, I want to be present just to intimidate <laughs> after all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow them in. I'll, I'll uh, just want to make sure everything's okay. We put a lot on the line to capture these guys, so I want to make sure that they're not going to get away or nothing, no funny business goes on. Yeah. Tess probably going to stay back just to make sure that it's only those guys and no one else because okay. you never know. So I'll mm -hmm. just watch outside and see if anyone else asks funny and whatnot. Right. Okay. The one the one with the leg, how, uh, is he conscious or not? They're just, they're just dragging him. You know, it's like you see all this blood just kind of trailing down, trickling mm -hmm. down his leg. And then they're they've got you know like two kind of sumo wrestler guys just kind of carrying each one of them down this mm -hmm. hallway um and uh the you see um may's may's dad it's like it points towards a like a private room um and then they they bring them in and um uh, and then um he he kind of looks at you for a minute like if you all follow um it's like i don't know if you want to see this <laughs> um but uh if you know if you follow uh just drags them into this little little room where it's like a kind of like an inter like a private security you know interrogation kind of like a, a cell um and uh he um he starts he starts talking to him and says uh well so amateur hour uh you guys you've been here about uh two days now and you tried to kill my daughter twice and uh in two days and and you're it looks like you're gonna you're about to bleed out you might make it do you want to talk and then, and then the guy is like, you know, he just kind of like clams up, and uh, and and May's dad is like, ah, yeah, I didn't think so. Um, well, that's all right. You know, it just sends it sends a message if you two uh, don't don't come back. It, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, and so you know how the war of assassins work. Like that's that's mm -hmm. why you're here, right? You know. Um, I'll kind of try to get the uh, uh, the father's attention. Um, uh huh. Why don't you Why don't you just drug him? Do what? Why don't you just drug him? Oh, and he's like, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some information out of one of them eventually. Mm. Um, yeah, but like I said, wouldn't it be simpler just to drug him? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, that one's that one's not gonna make it. That guy's. Mm. You know, <laughs> um, he's, he looks over at the the one who's just he's kind of like slumping into this seat, like lower and lower, and his you know his eyes are glazing over, clearly going into shock and just bleeding out. Um, I, 
I, I think I'm, I'm a decent medic and I think we'd have a really good chance with the really injured one, because if we bring him back, patch him up, he's going to be, you know, regardless of what type of training he has, he's, there's going to be a part of him that's going to be really grateful. Mm -hmm. And then he'll have hope that he can live, especially if we give him some, you know, I'm pretty sure I can patch the guy up. Okay. So we, bring him to that level, I think there's another bargaining chip. It will be yeah, in his own mind. He'll be struggling whether or not he's, you know, he's appreciative of, of what we're doing. I think we could and, get... And j j I mean, it's easier to be strong if you have no hope than it is if you have hope. If you have hope, you're going to live. That you're going to do things that you wouldn't do if you had no hope. Yeah. So I can, I, I'll help you out there. I, I have some medical training, medic training as well. He's like, well, you're you're welcome to try, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then he starts he starts talking about he's like, um, yeah, well, I mean, we could ship him back. We could ship him back, and you know, like after you kind of like pull him aside and like whisper, he's like, we could ship him back in a body bag. Like that would send a message. Um, I do want to know what the bounty is up to. Like what, you know, what what the bounty is on my daughter's head. Um, we, you know, usually what we would do is we just take them out in the middle of the ocean and just, they take a little short little walk and then we leave. And, you know, that's just yeah. how we deal with things around here. Uh, uh, Lucas is pretty good at reading people. Why don't you just start naming amounts? And I bet you he can peg when do you get, when do you get to the, when the, when you hit the right amount by watching the person's reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's and he sees you kind of treating the. Um, or actually, do you want? Do you guys want to go ahead and do a medic? Yeah. Roll. Sure. You go grab. Good old Sal. Where are you, Sal? Where's the icon? Characters here it is. Sal Bornick. Okay. And let's see. I just roll them if I get any successes. It helps him, right? Um, yeah, I think, um, well, I forget how assisting, how assist works in Traveler. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was my last <laughs> character, half medic. <laughs> now, I have no okay. clue. <laughs> All right, let, me, let me just roll, see what I can do. Here. Yeah. I think Anna might be the only one who, who actually has any medic. Uh, um, do we have a, do we have like a, um, does, do they have like a first aid kit, anything that we can use for modifiers? Yeah. Um, well, okay. So say that he, you know, he's trying to do like the tough guy, like we're going to mm -hmm. torture you and get some, and then, you know, eventually a, um, a medic kind of guy like walks mm -hmm. in, um, you know, with a, with a, um, like a med kit and okay. and uh and you know he's he's like he, he's like man things have really changed around here in the old days you know you'd, you'd be dead you'd be dead already yeah. both you'd be dead already okay, so does that just give a, like a trying one... to find the rest of you you know yeah does that um, give a one on does that give a one on the anything or is it still a zero modifier um yeah i guess go ahead and roll um just give me a. You can. I'll. I will. I will rule for this guy, and then he has some medical training, and then I will give him your assist. Okay. How about right. that? Okay. Uh, okay. So you're on. All right. So. Okay. So that's he. He starts to patch this guy up, and he is just. He's like not looking good you know he's 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 like trying to hold his leg together and it's just blown apart and then um the the guy you know takes out a um like a sleeve thing and mm -hmm. kind of like you know cuts all the clothes off of his leg and then like like sucks up on the around his leg um and stops all the bleeding and then it you know presses a button and the like the ice like the uh all this stuff mm -hmm. starts circulating in the sleeve and then he he kind of like looks at it like it's it, and looks at the the medic and and he's like 
yeah, you're going to live. Um, uh, so the, the, the other one though, he's, he's, you know, he's, he says, he says, so, so, so how much, how much is the bounty? How much is the bounty? Tell me how much, how much my daughter's head is worth. Um, and he's like, it's just a job. It's just a job, you know, like it's nothing personal, man. Um, and he's kind of smiling, like he's getting treated, you know, for this stab wound, like I'm going to make it. And, uh, the, so wait, Lucas, do you want to do, um, yeah, I kind of want to, I, I don't know how powerful, uh, probably it's a contested check or something. If you, if a psi, if a psionic individual can invade someone's mind, mm -hmm. I didn't, I wanted to lay back for the other, uh, you know, more stealthy encounters, but in an interrogation, I imagine something like actually trying to peruse the internal libraries of, uh, the yeah. interrogee, if that's possible. I think that there is, um, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm looking at your, I'm looking at your sheet right now. So mm -hmm. it's, um, the, uh, the scan surface thoughts thing is you're just kind of listening to mm -hmm. like what people are thinking. And then there is a, there's another one where it's like, you're actually trying to, you know, like go into their head and find information and like yeah. yank it out. And I think that they basically get to try and resist. Yeah. Um, well, what about, what about just doing like this, something where you get just automatically again, start naming off what would be a standard low figure for a, a hit uh, and then work your way. Well, yeah. that would still be, that would still be um not surface thoughts. That'd be something internal. Like that's kind of how silent powers work. It's not like, the only thing you can do with psionic powers is is the first things that like you're thinking while you're talking. So it wouldn't be like the person that basically planned everything for them. You would actually have to delve into their mind, which yes, it does need yeah. a check. Not but, from just the um person like you know that needs you to check, but Lucas also has to do a check, which is a scion check, to see if they can actually even delve that far to begin with. Yeah. But like and, and if you fail it, by the way. There are severe consequences with the sign checks for not just Lucas, but the person. So if Lucas <laughs> fails a check, he can get a really bad migraine to um, he actually starts bleeding out of every orifice on his face. Yeah. It, it really depends how bad it is. <laughs> they're not they're fun. Science, science um, abilities aren't fun in the game. Like, you can have them, but there's consequences for having them. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, so I think or you did you did see like when when you tried to I think you tried mm -hmm. to scan service thoughts before and then somebody like blocked you like they had some training mm -hmm. um, and or, or it might have been like there was the police that like had the kind of like the helmets that had like the side blockers in them too. Yeah. But um, the so anybody what are you doing? Like, if you're just listening. You know, if he's like, if he's like saying like, what's the bounty, you know, what's the bounty, it mm -hmm. might just come up in his head. Yeah. But if you, if you want to like pull specific information out, like who hired you, mm -hmm. how much did they pay you? How what you know, like who specifically hired you? We, we, we have time in an interrogation. So I want to take the lesser blood out of my nose <laughs> route. Uh, I want to attempt to see if he thinks of a bounty number when during the conversation. So that's a surface thought type of deal, mm -hmm. from what I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think just roll your roll your sigh thing. Because um, mm -hmm. that see. one doesn't really have any like negative consequence. Oh nope. Mm -hmm. So he um, like uh, this guy is from where you're from. You know, he's from he's from Hemsa and he's like used to this. He's like been in this situation before where somebody was like, you know, a um somebody was trying to get some information out of him and there's a psyker, you know. Mm -hmm. Um maybe he even knows that you're a dragonfly or something. Or well, he probably wouldn't know that you're a dragonfly, but um 
I so I think, um, you know, he kind of clams up, like uh, like he's he's, you know, he's he's just like he's like can't believe that they're that you're keeping them alive. You know, he's like he's like oh my god, these guys like they're gonna put us in a cell. Like I just killed tried to kill his daughter. Um. But uh, do you want to do you want to up the ante? If you like, don't hear you don't initially like like he's like it's like what's the bounty? How much is it? Come on, tell me how much my daughter's head's worth. And you get a block, you know, like you get blocked. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to like up the ante and be like, okay, we're doing this the hard way? Yeah, maybe sure. Us, maybe <laughs> from the eyes Let's and go. Mouth, nose and anus. And uh, uh, to the to the bleed. Okay, no. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to up it. But also, I mean, um, this is a little bit out of character as well. But in an interrogation like fashion, he's way too relaxed, so he has time to actually block and stuff. So probably a bad cop, good cop routine will work. I'm going to, before I attempt another interrogation, a much more violent one, I'm going to tell him that, yeah, he's being kept alive, but he's being kept alive, which is bad for him. Because if I don't manage to get information out of him, the pliers and the nail extractors are going to come out. Uh, it's going to be much, much worse if I don't get what I want, you know, uh, if I let and I point to some brutes of the Sato family behind us. If these guys get to you, it's going to be far worse for you. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at your role right now. Um, and that doesn't look right. Because your, your, your skill level is two. And then your modifier is a plus one. So you should have gotten a plus three for that. But that's still, I think you still, still low. one and a three. But but anyways, so the, um, but he's, you know, he's like, he's, he's asking him. And, and then, and then, um, uh, Akira starts to kind of, um, up the, uh, up the ante, you know, he's like, he's like, well, I mean, like I said, you know, we can we can waste time like treating these guys. We can we can patch them up. We can keep them alive. We can put them in a cell. I can keep them alive for days just torturing, you know. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll pull their 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 fingernails out. I want to know how much my daughter is worth to this corporate. You know, like they want to come here. They want to declare war on us. That's fine. Um, you know, none of the other clans, none of the other clans around here have claimed a bounty yet. Like, I haven't seen any. Those are the ones I'm worried about. I'm worried about a mob war. I'm not worried about some corporation sending assassins. Um, but the uh, and then you know he kind of he kind of starts to sweat a little bit. He's like, oh. I should also you know, um, ask this too. Have you been keeping up with the cost of your psionic powers? I did you know about that, by the way? <laughs> so there is a thing called psionic strength in the game. Sorry, I, I don't mean the button or anything, but like, so you have a better grasp of how your psionic powers work. So you have a thing that's called psionic strength. That's like you basically roll two d six to see how powerful it is, and each time you use a psionic strength you have to cost some of that strength in order to use abilities. Once you're cost out, you can't use any more psionic abilities for um, the day, basically, or I think for, like, how long until you can actually gain them back. He's, he's, well, he's pretty... His, it's pretty good, though. It's, like, 11. He has, like, 11. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, so basically, like, um, to probe someone, which is what you're doing, um, if you do it for one to six minutes, which is considered very difficult, this is a very difficult skill to do, the cost is four plus range. So whatever the range is of where you are standing also adds to the cost. Yeah. But um if I think it's okay. if you're just listening to surface thoughts, I think it's only like one. Um surface thoughts is um just cost of two plus range, so it's not that okay. bad. 
and, and okay, the, um, when you, if when you you're saying range, feet, so and get feet from, inches, um, what? So three inches would be, I believe, because if we're going to have range, let me check the chart real quick. So learn from the M. Yep. So you have a plus two in telekinesis or, or t and everything. So that's plus two. Uh, clairvoyancy would be then at plus three, which I think you said he does have a plus three. So he can go all the way up to clairvoyancy, which, yeah, he could do all those. Uh, let's check. So every range. So specifically what range it looks like, um, there isn't really a thing. It just says plus range. I'm trying to look. I thought they updated this. It looks like they haven't, maybe. Uh, let's see. I think it just goes with, like, um the meters. So it's, like, it's basically four plus the meters. So if it's three meters, you add a oh, three wow. to that. So it's seven cost. I doubt he's shutting okay. across the room. So so this this is, um here's, here's probe. So you can definitely do this. This is in your school. Like, this would be in your training. Um, yeah, I also imagine that, so that's more than fair, so I think uh, you tell me the cost, but the range, I think it's not going to be added because I don't want to not make myself known in this situation. Like, I'm almost point blank to this. Dude, yeah, I think. you guys are in yeah. the room, right? Basically, yeah, yeah. basically, the cost of, basically, the cost of the range then would be one meter, basically, or something. Because uh, there is still a cost of range. Okay, so, so it's, you'll it be, has a minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you'd be at one meter because it's four plus range. So range basically is like how far are you from the person. In this case, you'd be one meter or something because you're in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I figure mm -hmm. we should get this all settled now because I'm pretty sure you're going to be using your um, psionic stuff more. And I just realized we, you, we, you guys haven't been doing them very right. And I realized like it's weird because psionics is a weird ability for your character to mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Um... So. I figured I should like um help you with this real quick. Also, um about the thing about the assist again. Yeah, you have to roll if you get a success as a plus one to the roll. If you get a really good roll, like a eleven or twelve, that's a plus two to the assist roll. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I basically I gave him a plus two because um Anna was helping and then he um yeah, but it was good enough between the both the, the two of them. But okay, so read service thoughts. I was wrong. It is two. It's a size size cost of two, and then it's an average check. So it's a it's an eight plus. So here we go. So here's probe. I'm looking at probe right now. Um, the application of great psionic strength will enable a telepath to delve deep into the mind of a subject and to then read their innermost thoughts. Questioning can be used in the procedure to force the subject to divulge specific information. Um, the telepath can easily determine deliberate untruths. Uh, and then it says that it cannot be used against a shielded mind, but then um, there's going to be negative consequences if you fail. You're looking for a 12. If you want to do this, and it's going to cost you four, four side points um you since you're right next to him but you know while while akira is questioning this guy you can like tell him if anything is true for true or not and um yeah obviously um oh. i'm also reading so it says three hours by right after if you have expended all your um psychic, um strength points basically for the day you have to wait at three hours before you use them again it is funny though because it never says what happens if you do try to use psionic powers if nothing happens. That's one thing. The keeper can literally just say other things can happen. Like again, point blank, literally blood just coming out at every orifice of your face, or even like a scene from Scanners where your head explodes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, it, like me, that blood, sends a message too. Yeah. That sends a message. Uh, hey, too. at a game, at a game, you know, you probably have to think. I accidentally, I was, I thought I was unlocking a thing or other. Uh, somehow, I managed to delete one of my specialties under electronics. That was computer, right? Is that there? The... I think you had computers and uh, remote ops and remote ops, right? Remote ops. Is yeah, that's still on there? Your sensors. I think it's. I think it's. Remote ops. It, well, remote ops is still there. So the computers, okay. And it yeah, was computers. two, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so okay. So if you if you want to probe his mind to actually get specific answers, like 
um, you can do that, but um, it's going to be tough. And then there's going to be negative consequences if you fail. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I decrease my rating, not the temporary stuff, but I need to understand the cap. Uh, so I make myself hard to uh, harder to probe when I'm spending the points. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, Basically, yeah, what yeah. happens is like um, the less psionic points you have, the better for your mind. The worse it is for your powers because then you can't really use powers at that point. And Yeah, I'm reading it again yeah. just to make sure if I read it correct. It seems like you get one point back for every hour of a point you've used. So basically, you have 11. You have to wait 11 hours to get all of them back if you used all them in one go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you guys, you know, I don't think that all you've done is like you got a good night's sleep, you know, like, and then you went to these to these races, like started day drinking. So I'd say you're at full. Well, he would be at full because he hasn't used any of them. Like Yeah. that's the thing; if he hasn't really used any. Yeah. Um. So do you? But do you want to actually like probe probe his mind, or do you just want to listen? Uh, yeah, let's make it interesting. Let's use that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. okay, so four points besides the two points that are already spent. So I am down to five. Mm hmm. Let's go. So just to make the economy minus four points in addition. Okay. And so I spend the points. Do I roll with the rating of five? That's what I'm asking, essentially. So I decrease the psionic strength down to five. And I also have a modifier, apparently, of minus one. Um... No, that shouldn't be because no, uh, I do, no, it should be plus one, I think. Why is that? Why is that minus one? Because your um, your intelligence based, right? Like your or your or well, I mean, you're super dexterous too. Um, Oh, it's education. Oh, that's why. Uh, mm Oh, -hmm. it, Yeah. it goes on your education. Okay. So. Yeah, psionics is education, not intelligence. It's weird. It's I don't know why it's that, but that's how the game does it. I would have thought it would be intelligence, but okay. Um. Uh, it's it because edu like so it's because education technically in the system think of it like wisdom and like um pathfinder or D and D that's why it's more about wisdom than intellect so that's kind of like education is like oh these are like the things you've gained over and honed over time instead of like this is just pure brain <laughs> right it's also because psionics like if they work like intelligence um fungus and stuff couldn't use them which um Psionics are actually a thing that like plants and other like um, weird parasites have. So that's why it's not intelligence because it's literally used for more of an alien or weird fucking plague virus um, thing from a different planet. They're more used for that. So when they're used for players, they use the same thing. Basically what I'm saying is it's like you're a living fungus. <laughs> So, but you get a so you get a plus five to this. Is that Uh, you have to spend the points in order to use it. It doesn't quite say that you use them, but I'm guessing that's how it works because you have to spend the points in order to, you know, use the thing. all right? So, Victor, you're looking for a twelve. Oh man, okay, let's go. Concentrating, Let's go. uh, Professor Xavier style. Let's see. Nope, <laughs> I died. So that's a that's a five, and then plus five. That's a 10. So it's just short, right? So um, the, uh, this, you know, like Akira is like, he's like, he's like, what's my daughter worth? Come on, tell me, tell me you want to, you want to, you know, you want to live. Um, and, and, and he's kind of like, he's just kind of like sitting back, you know, and laughing. And then all of a sudden, like blood starts gushing, you know, <laughs> like out of his eyes. And out of his nose, and he's like, like you know, out of his ears, and then it just starts pulling down his neck. As as he's sitting back on the chair, and I and I can kind of read um, Lucas to see what he was doing there. I'm gonna Josh will uh, Josh 
um, jostle of the chair leg to where he's off balance and can't really concentrate on blocking. Oh, um, well, but he, uh, he's this, it went wrong. Like Lucas went, like went into his mind, started mm -hmm. pulling out some information. I might give him something, you know, like I'll, I might still give him some information, mm -hmm. but it just like, he, yeah, like, the science doesn't really do damage to the person. It's just like weird things can happen. Like yeah. technically anything can happen that the keeper says it can either happen to the person that's trying to do the science check or the person that was being um you know probed and whatever yeah. happens like you can literally just have it where it's like instead of like an information lucas slaps himself while the guy slaps himself at the same time like stuff stupid shit like that sometimes it's like they just slap himself because and then lucas actually slaps himself because of it because their minds are connected for that split second mm -hmm. it's and this like guy, this guy just starts bleeding like crazy you know like blood just starts gushing out of his nose you know and then and and like Lucas, like you initially you get something like about his gang, you know, about the Reavers and like they like love um cyber, you know, like they love to have like the all this like gear where they're like really cybered up. And he was thinking about all the sweet cyber that he's gonna get, like he's gonna buy like this really he's gonna buy like a new arm or something, you know. And uh and then all of a sudden it's like he's like, Oh wait, this guy's in my mind, you know, and then like and then you start like pulling, get, get trying to get information out, and then like pop, just like oh, like all the blood starts gushing out, you know. And then the other one that's like that's already been patched up, you know, that has his leg where it's like pumping, you know, trying to like stabilize the wound. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> like with like I'll talk. I'll talk. <laughs> Lucas is like, "Oopsie, my bad." Yeah. Oh, also, uh, but I, but I also am bleeding. Everyone is bleeding, <laughs> from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. Yours, yours is not. This so is bad. A, this is this is exorcism, and I'm going to lay down on the bed. But I'm happy that he's bleeding out too. I'm thinking, like, take this is son of a something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the um, but the blood, you know, like the blood comes. To comes out of his, you know he's just like it's just everywhere your your nose just starts bleeding like crazy like it won't stop you know it's just gushing out um and uh yeah but you you know you like you lie down and then mm -hmm. and then the other guy's like i'll talk i'll talk i'll talk just not that not that um <laughs> yes yeah, Stuart. um like science are weird and traveler like there's really no clear way of using them like there's costs for them and how to use them but technically you can have anything happen really when you use them <laughs> it's really funny like the keeper can just say oh you try to probe this person's mind or oh you try to like do this to uh, move on an object with them um, your sonics you slap yourself instead because you failed the roll <laughs> well and and he was looking for a 12 too like this is actually like a tough thing to do um, yeah, the higher they are for the cost, the harder they are. This is the reason why they're very difficult. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So um, the other the other ones like he's he's like um, we were we were hired by uh, um, by estrogen. We were hired by estrogen, and, and we're from we're from Hemsa. And and he's like, yeah, I know that, dummy. Tell me tell me how much my my daughter is worth. How much how much money is on her head. And and then they're, they're like it's like six million credits or the, or the one that's not bleeding out it's like six million credits six million credits, um, and uh, and then he's and then he says he says oh those cheap little bastards they you know how much money you know I I got in contact with them they wanted a billion credits for that stupid facility and they're only going to spend six million credits to knock off my daughter those little bastards. You know, oh, that makes me so mad. Um, and uh, yeah, but this guy is just like, you know, like the blood is just gushing. And then like the the medic guy like kind of like tries to like, he's like, oh, oh, oh. And he's like, no, just leave him. Just, just forget it. Just, just forget it. I got what I wanted, you know. Um, uh, and then and, and he's like, he's like, OK, so. Yeah, <laughs> only six million. <laughs> Um, and, uh, the, 
and so the, the guy's like the guy's like yeah i'm a, i'm a, i'm a reaver i'm a reaver uh you can you can sell you can sell me like i'm probably worth i well, i don't know if i'm worth like six million but i'm worth something you know um and and he's like he's like you know what amateur hour why don't you just shut the fuck up like before you get you know get yourself into more more trouble um okay well no wait a minute oh what about the rest is there more gangers is there more is there more because because i got no problem going to war with a gang uh and and then he's you know he's like no no we just we just thought it was easy money like we we thought we could we thought we could come in and 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 uh you know cash in and then and then akira is just like he's he's just pissed he just leaves he's like he's like yeah you know uh, put him I'll in ask, a cell i'll ask uh, sal and uh listen how many were on that boat that were shooting at you Oh, I said I'm. I laid back. I'm outside, like checking for you know. Oh, oh okay. Sal, Sal, how many were on? How, how many were on that boat that were shooting at you? What it was, two or four? I can't. Yeah, it was. It was just. It was just two. Like yeah. when you, yeah, because one of so, them was driving and then the other one was shooting. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So that matches up. That matches up. Then all right. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I I love that they said like oh yeah this is easy money I'm like ah yes going after a crime lord like person in the government you know <laughs> daughter easy money easy. <laughs> yeah, that's easy well, this really yeah. this really is the team rocket of this game <laughs> I think that maybe yeah. gets them like one piece of cyber each too it's like not even that much it's like yeah <laughs> for Ellie, she did all this for like um a thing that's worth only three technology how do you fuck up this bad do you not see the, the stupidity of this <laughs> nope they don't they don't <laughs> they probably do now <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i think one of them did you know they're bleeding from every orifice in their face you know i think they, they learned the lesson <laughs> um but i'm guessing that lucas you don't want to try and probe the other one right <laughs> no no I mean, sorry, for for and for and no. Get yeah. <laughs> the more introduce. Wait a wait a while. Is there any styptic powder in this in this uh, kit here? <laughs> it's like that's why I'm getting swab his nose to stop the bleeding. <laughs> Just do whatever you do, don't stick a tampon up there. That's <laughs> um, no, no, no. There's... So the um. But the kind, you know, of, like, kind of the, like almost cauterizes the thing with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um but the yeah, like the bullet just, just keeps coming, just keeps coming. Um so but the yeah, the um the the heavies kind of just you know they're like, all right, uh they just pick this guy up and then shove him in a cell. Um mm -hmm. And uh and and you know they kind of look at you like whatever. Um and the the medic guy like it's like he's like, what do I do with that? And then they're like, just just forget it. Don't don't yeah, just go, just go, you know. Well let, let him let the medic help look help Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's like he like goes over, he's like he's like goes over to Lucas and like starts trying to you know, um, like uh, put a it compress, probably, like it, like a cold compress on your face. To like it, it probably has one of those ridiculous, ridiculously uncomfortable deep uh, bandages that they give to you at uh, nose, ears, and uh, throat, uh, and they are like shoved in my nose. I literally breathe on my mouth <laughs> right now. <laughs> Lucas like, is like, I am clearly fine, it says with all blood like flowing from their face. I am fine. <laughs> he he like pulls out like a thing and like cracks it and then it like turns like instantly cold and then like puts it on your face, you know. Mm -hmm. Um but uh so you did or let's see, Anna, you mentioned that you kind of wanted to look into 
like afterlife and um yeah you the the guy the um the guy who was cloned the uh, um the executive was uh well i guess you you know you're you know that um may told you that it was victor tran um but i guess you don't really know exactly like which corporation which um like who he um who he who or who he what which faction like which part of zaibatsu he was Yeah, but but I'll have if you to. did want to talk to Keishi, she could definitely help you with that Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um she would know a lot about like the the clans and you know um you could do some more dating about um afterlife if you Yeah, wanted to I think that's a wise idea. um Since we're getting yeah we'll, we'll very say that deep into this. this is out of commission for a little while <laughs> just got a cold cold pack on his face like with a bunch of gauze shoved up his nose um <laughs> But so, or do you want to do you want to do that? Do you want to go to the to the geisha bar? yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's do that. It's like, um, so Anna kind of walks out of this security office, you know, just covered in blood, just like, Ugh. you know, <laughs> um, Well, I'll, yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go upstairs and change first. <laughs> so. Um, don't want as I don't you, want to dis you know, you... I don't want to disrespect Casey by bringing a bunch of stuff into her, her place there. yeah. Um, so the, the, you know, you, you come back to the bar and, uh, it's a little bit later in the day and then they're starting to get some customers in. Um, and then you see like the, the same little, you know, Android girls out front with their little katan like you know their little um uh geisha kind of gowns and their their little katanas and stuff like standing outside like bodyguarding and stuff and then Yeah. there's um you do notice one thing when you walk in there's A like question. a group of um A question. Where 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 is Casey again? Where is her place located? oh she's in she's inside she has a bar inside the casino Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. All right. It's the same. Yeah, it, it's like it's it's just we just I guess we're just calling it the geisha bar, but the like her her faction her group is called the the geisha or like they you know they call themselves the geishas. Um, but yeah, you can ask her. You can ask her about that. But the the one thing that you do notice is that there's like a group of guys who are like cybered up, you know, um, and then they have like the like the ports. where there's like wires kind of like plugged in and um, they're sitting with like a group of these, uh, you know, geishas like, like in a little booth and then they have like the wires like plugged, plugged in and then their eyes are kind of like pulled well, back in their head and they're like kind of like laughing and, you know, drinking and stuff. And, uh, but it seems like maybe they're like jacked in or something into some, Mm -hmm. you know, virtual reality thing or something. Um, No way you find me doing that. yeah. Um, I like I like my fingers doing the walking. um, but, uh, yeah, Keishi, um, she, uh, she like sees you and she waves you over. She's like, um, like it tells you to come to the back. Um, and she says, um, What did you say that, uh, what did you say that that gang was? The ones who, uh, who tried to kill May? Uh, Reavers. Uh, and then she points at the, the guys, like the cybered up guys, you know, with the, the jacks in their heads. And she's like, don't worry, they're very entertained right now. But I think that they, you know, they just came in from Hemsa. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're in the little, the virtual, um, the room is full of cherry blossoms and they're, they're it's a, 
you know, it's it's very very picturesque. It's very nice, but mm. uh, they they can't see you right now. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure they're in it for the cherry blossoms. Yes. Yeah. Um, he says, "Well, did you did you want to did you want to talk about something or?" Uh, or yeah, it... I'll 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 talk about the name of the. Uh, uh, if I'm going to be down here, I need to kind of get an overview of the groups involved here. And I mentioned uh, one name has come up several times. And I mentioned the name of the of uh, the guy that's supposed to be cloned. Just trying to get us. That's uh, come up several times in conversation. So just kind of an overview of. The groups in this on this world and uh and mm -hmm. if you have any information on that particular uh, person in particular who's he with uh what's the position that sort of thing like that mm -hmm. any rumors oh, oh, victor thing. victor tran he yeah. was the um he was the vanguard the uh you know they they kind of mixed the triad with the um with the like corporate titles they he was a vanguard operations officer for um black lotus black lotus cartel um they did a lot of the, the drug manufacture around here they still do drug manufacture they make pharmaceuticals they uh there's an island not too far from here they uh they make a lot of pharmaceuticals there. Um, but uh, I think the current mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. is uh, Dr. Mei Lin. Um, and then she is the uh, incense master, the ceremonies officer, um, you know, the, uh, the current uh, vanguard. And then there's somebody who would be the dragon head. Uh, but we don't really know who that is. But she's like the uh, the public kind of figure, public mm -hmm. leadership. Uh, and then there's somebody else who would be Dragon Head who um, would be top leadership, but we don't really know who that is. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But Black Lotus right. does, they are the big drug guys around and here. When you, when you say drug, do you mean like legitimate pharmaceuticals or do you mean like black market? Both. Both, okay. That's uh, how they got their start. Um, they kind of controlled the drugs around here. Hmm. And then they ended up main, getting more into the, the actual manufacture of hmm. uh, higher-end drugs. They still make drugs. Hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that island is pretty well guarded. One more, one more time. I'm assuming that island is pretty well guarded. Um, yeah, I, you know, trade secrets and sort of thing like that. Yeah, you could probably, um, you could probably go and take a look around without getting shot at or anything like that. But right, if you're planning on breaking in, I, Why don't, not? Since I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, no, I'm. Just... Morning and just wondering how well they were, you know, like I said, how much they did they, uh, obviously they do present a public face, so you could get some things, but mm -hmm. other things would be hidden behind other things. Well, they have uh, some facilities, you know, they have um, a lot of uh, manufacturing, uh, chemical depots, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know the the Satos though they um, they uh, used to control the ports. Um, that's that was kind of their thing was, was smuggling and um, well the um, just it's it's tough for them to uh, get things on and off the planet mm -hmm. without the Satos, if that okay. makes sense. Okay, um, makes sense. So what what would you say the relationship between the uh, the Black Lotus and the, the Sato families are? Hard to say with everything that's happening. I mean, you know, I I I haven't heard of anybody any of the clans 
trying to assassinate May, and if they were, I would be a lot more worried about her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll find all horrible assassins seem to be jokers, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I've learned. I was just trying to get a, like a feel of this area because obviously it's best to know the players and what's going on, you know. Don't want to overstep any boundaries, make a mistake, anything like that. As far as I know, the war assassins currently is only between um, uh, <clears throat> Astrogen and the Satos. Yeah, So yeah, that's that's what I thought. if Yeah. it, if it was between the local factions, there would be a lot more blood spilled, Mm -hmm. a lot. No, out of game. How much? Um, I mean, she has the tech stuff. Um, does she have have her finger on the pulse of a lot of that? If if I wish to ask about afterlife, what are my chances of getting a? Oh, oh yeah. Um, so say that she, you know, she said that she was going to do some digging. Mm -hmm. Um, and she, she says that it's like a, um, it's, it's like a, um, a server. It looks like they're, they're keeping people's digital, um, personas like they're, like they've taken, they've downloaded their, their minds, put them into a server, and then they're living in this virtual reality thing, waiting for bodies. I mean, if that was, if Mike, if, if I had to guess, I would say that Victor had himself uploaded into Afterlife And then they were going to put his consciousness into the cloned body. And then that's when something went wrong. Um, that's uh, that's the chance when you uh I mean, you know, first of all having a mind on a server is is not as safe as it sounds like, and also dealing with illegal cloning has its risks too, so Yeah, I, uh, I've heard that things are not so good in uh, Hemsut right now, either. What's going on there? A lot of uh, rioting and uh, in, infighting with uh, the different hyper tribes and... Uh, Why are they? Why are they? Uh, what are they rioting about? Uh, I don't, I mean, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's, uh, it's a police state, right? Like they, uh, Yeah, yeah. well, I guess against the police state. Mm -hmm. well, it doesn't work out too well, but I guess if you get pissed off enough. mm -hmm. Yeah. I heard there was, uh, some, some kind of, a. Uh, A labor dispute or something in the mines and then there was some kind of local hero to the hivers um uh, some kind of a i don't know some some kind of a leader that they tried to put on some sadistic game show and then they they broke him free Oh, yes, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. but it sounds like the hive the hive uh The different tribes are, are are fighting in the mines right now, and people are just trying to get off the planet. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh... If there's anything else. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, um, being new, there's things that I probably don't know that I don't know I don't know. Can you think of anything else that I should know?
about that situation here or the situation here in relationship to stuff off world, anything like that. Well, I can tell you a little bit about about our our group. Sure, um, go ahead. What we do. Uh, well, we um, we are the Silk faction. Um, it goes back a long way. It's uh, it has to do with um, sex workers. When uh, way back a long time ago, when um, you know, uh, in mine towns, they might have a lot of prostitutes working, and then to have them on the books having legal work, they would list mm -hmm. them as seamstresses. And <laughs> okay, it's just been for, since then, you know, the the but uh, yeah, we're known as the silk faction, but we um, we uh, free um we free uh sex worker androids and we recruit them and um we can't make more more androids so we recruit through other means we go around sort of like a, i don't know like a ministry i guess yeah okay um but uh yeah so far as i know People are still a little bit nervous of Von Neumann machines, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I myself was a pleasure model many, many mm. years ago. So do they, uh, they get uh, uh, programming script or uh, that any program, uh, can they... Can you modify the programming to where they're uh, they really are free? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if they do it, it's by by their choice, not by uh, this. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's good. That's good. But we do consider it a form of slavery. Yeah, I will. I would too. Yes. Uh, I mean, I. Uh, yeah, if there's Fine. anything, any other factions that you want to know about, I I can tell you what I know. Um, okay. Um, okay, so we have the um, Sato's or the, the transportation, uh, uh, on and off planet, the, uh, the, the Black Lotus is the drugs, uh, Mm -hmm. Well, just give me a rundown of the, the name of some of the other factions, just to not only if you even catch my attention, I'll I'll ask you about them. Right. Yeah. Um. So locally here on the island, on this island, uh, the big players are the um, Yamaguchi. They um, do. Uh, construction but they also um you know have their uh have their hands and other things too and uh um the uh a, a white paper crane triad they're um they kind of do what we do they do um cyber you know hacking things like that cyber crime okay. uh, yeah but um, they're all, we're all friendly around here. Mm -hmm. And so Black Lotus, they have a little bit, not maybe not as good of a reputation because they make drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually on this island, uh, I know this is, a, I, this is an island world, but um, what are some of the other big islands and what goes on on them? Um. Let's see what my notes. Um, so the um the island where Black Lotus does most of their like chemical kind of manufacturing, and then they there's also a um a university there. And it's kind of like one of the better universities on the on the planet. 
is uh, Mizushima, Mizushima, and then there's also a psionic institute there. Um, and then you are on, you're currently on Hoshima right okay. now. And this one is kind of like the um, the Maui or like the Macau, you know, mm -hmm. of uh, there's, it was very touristy. And then the, the, like the low port is connected to um, like it's connected by a bridge to uh, it's its own little island, but it's like right next to uh, Hoshima. And then there's like tons and tons of little tiny islands that. Uh, yeah. So, those are the major players then? Okay. Mm. What about, um, uh, we ran across, I don't know if you have any knowledge of this or not, but uh, maybe from here people talk, we ran across an interesting creature in the, uh, the seas. I believe there's a, one in the aquarium there. They seem to almost be helpful to us. Uh, what do you know about them, if anything? Oh, the um, the, the side fish? Yeah, uh-huh. They're, I don't, you know, I, they're very interesting because they're, all I know is that, well, when, when people first came here, when they first mm -hmm. came to the world, they, um, they traded with them. They would tr trade them shiny baubles for things. They like uh, glass and gems and, and things like mm -hmm. that. And uh, they um, communicate telepathically um they do uh they do displays of um of colors to show to show emotions it's part of their mm -hmm. part of their communication um supposedly it's part of how they hunt they kind of hypnotize their mm -hmm. uh their prey um and um i have heard that uh that they don't exist in the fossil record of the of the world, or at least not very deep. So they were probably brought here by the precursors. Mm. Because it's a it's a water world with perfect conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean it stays like this all year round, but mm -hmm. so it looks like the precursors were maybe trying to transplant them to a, a safe place or something like that, maybe? Or maybe they just found them useful. Mm -hmm. The size, yeah, they could be with the psionics, yeah. Uh, but they were, like I said, they were, seemed like they were trying to help us, so that's why I was interested in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I've seen, I've seen them. I know what they look, but, you know, I, I'm a robot. So they can't uh, communicate with me mm -hmm. telepathically. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, sometimes being... Well, I've seen that's being able to t communicate telepathically is a good thing. So other times, it's not so good. Mm hmm Yeah. What do you want me to do with them? She kind of like points at the, like these these group of guys, like possible, like more, more reavers. Well, can, can you send? Yeah, keep them entertained. If they leave, uh, give us a heads up. Hit, give us a heads up. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her more. I'll give her a communication. Uh, uh, yeah. Frequency or whatever. I'll do more digging on uh, on afterlife. I'll see what I can find. Yeah, if you're good on that, okay. It seems like some kind of rich person's playground where they get to live in heaven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah one thing that would be interesting on that. 
can't see how many of these people do. You know, I need like how many corporate people are involved there if they're in well, I mean like the estrogen, uh stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh if any of these uh corp uh corporations have seem to have a a large number of people there or an intimate connection with the uh with the project, that would be useful to find out. Well, I'm curious to the if uh, if Black Lotus, um, you know what they what they have invested in this project and yeah, exactly the drugs. Yeah, uh, how stupid are they in terms of what things they would mess around with? Do you think? I mm. mean, the the another thing that's been thrown around is pe precursor of, of, of that work. Or that I've seen starting around as precursor viruses. Are are they stupid enough to deal with something like that? I mean, I are not. stupid enough, greedy enough, whatever. I really hope not. I mean, that's inc sound incredibly dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It does seem like some of this stuff that uh, estrogen was working with that it's maybe the the backbone of their um, gene modification program making their super soldiers uh yeah combat was, drugs yeah right yeah like i said something that the horror story i tell you but uh yeah keep us try to do some digging on that if, uh, if you can and just like i said try to keep those folks occupied and tell us you know when they finally leave and if you over happen to over here what they're planning on doing <laughs> yeah. sure Sure. Yeah. I'll do that. Feel, feel free to stop by any time. Okay, sure, sure thing. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's been a long day. I think I'll have the have more of there, right? Mm -hmm. Before I head on back out, I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> kind of yeah. out of sight of the other, <laughs> out of the side of the other folks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you like belly up to the bar, you know, they bring you a beer. And then it's like it's on the house, um, oh, and uh, it, like if you look over your shoulder at these guys, at the like you know, they they fit the description of like these reavers, you know, or whatever. And then they're kind of like pawing at the air, like like cats, you know, and like laughing and stuff, and like talking to these other um, the other you know geishas that are around them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's? <laughs> mm -hmm. It'd be a keyboard any day. Yeah, but um, so are you? But you do you or yeah? Do you just want to? You just want to have a beer and then head up to your room? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll uh, um, hmm. I'll say what what time is it right now? Um say it's only like um maybe like 4 p.m. or something like that, you know, like around mm -hmm. there. <laughs> well, I'll check in and find out how uh Lucas is doing. Yeah. Um yeah, so say by the time you you get back to mm -hmm. this like um security office. Mm -hmm. Lucas has just stopped bleeding. Like like it's finally finally stopped bleeding. Uh okay, Lucas, lots of water for you. I, yeah. I have a bucket with me prepared to be thrown in a biohazard oven to destroy <laughs> the material. <laughs> um, I've been uh, covered in blood. And the, uh, I mean, for it's probably late, but I'm a little bit hungry in game because all this blood loss. Uh, yeah, like I said, w water, something with iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so a little uh, shellfish, get some turf. Yeah, um, but but it's far better. It's far better now. <laughs> okay. Go, go get some prime rib at the at the buffet and some some more shrimp. No more okay, shrimp. Yeah, more. 
no more shrimp. I, I <laughs> hung back with Lucas because I want to, he wasn't looking good to me. So I, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I'd be around in case he needed help or mm -hmm. it got worse. Because I don't know what's going on. I've just seen him bleed all over the place. I'm a little freaked out. Yeah. Most most of the blood is the would be assassins, but you know, mm -hmm. so a lot of a lot of it's Lucas's too. It's just, just on the yeah. on the floor, you know. Okay. Um, uh, well, uh, let's see. Um yeah, so I go uh, can you uh, go up and uh, bring uh uh bring down uh change clothes for Luke, for Lucas and then why don't we go get uh, uh get ourselves a bite to eat and to discuss things sounds wonderful Lovely. and uh, I'll give Tessa a call like, hey we're gonna meet in the bar at noon so uh just to get some uh, iron and uh uh Lucas and get him hydrated with water and we're not going to eat any more shrimp <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tessa and I'm just um, replies back that I'm, I'll be there in a bit. Just have to pack some things up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So doing 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 side fish is like it's um code for something, you know, like um, but yeah, out of context. Uh, <laughs> so, so you all um are you going to the to the buffet or get I wonder where we're, I I wonder if we're going to the buffet or not. It's almost like we're going to the buffet because we all said we, we're going to the buffet. <laughs> yeah, we need to go to the buffet. It's our meetup point now. It's our new meetup point after leaving the other planet because the other meetup point there was a cafeteria. Now we're at a buffet. Yeah, we have, right. we have evolved, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's we spotted some some sai fish on the buffet or sai shrimp on the buffet. Yeah, we'll be we'll be looking pretty good. Yeah, I I love I love uh, Sal's idea with the sai shrimp. I I cannot really eat the sai fish because they seem too friendly. Like they helped us in the past. <laughs> yeah, you know those are our pals. We're like, we can't eat our pals. Uh, I like the I mean, bad sai fish, you know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. I okay. The criminal. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. You know, we already have a size shrimp. It's Lucas. Look, yeah. they just look like a shrimp <laughs> now. You you it's see all... like one of these um black lotus like drug dealer guys, and he's like, he's like, hey, I heard you're talking about size shrimp. Like pulls open his, his trench. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got some really good size shrimp, man. Um, a whole cartel. Does yeah. nothing but trade at Sci Fish. Sci <laughs> Fish, Sci Shrimp. Don't forget about them, the Sci Puss, you know. Other one known as the um, Octopus Sci Zionics. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen those videos of like the um, like cuttlefish where they like change colors to like hypnotize their prey? Yeah. And, like sneak yeah. up on a fish and just like grab it. It's kind of cool. Yep. Um. <clears throat> So, so when we get together, I'll ask Sal about. Uh, so, have you ever been to uh, uh, the uh, to or around the island? Uh, let's see what's the thing about there again. The Black Lotus Island. Um, Mizushima. Mizushima, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or any of its places where it does manufacturing. Yeah. But you've been here longer than the rest of us. Yeah. And I think you would. You would have been, because like it would be one of the bigger islands, mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of industry kind of around there. Like um, there was a a drug that they made that was kind of like Viagra. And um, it was like got into the air and uh it made people like kind of you know frisky for a while. So that that was uh Part of the reputation of Mizushima for a little while. Based on an actual island in the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, you know that it's like, um, they have like, there's like, it's kind of industrial. 
but there's also like nice parts of um mm -hmm. like there's a university there's a site mm -hmm. there's a sci academy you know mm -hmm. um like this this planet does have a reputation for being like psionophilic compared to most planets the, the yeah. industrial that makes me curious and uh, probably they can teach me how to not lose blood out of all my pores so each time I'm <laughs> attempting this uh, because I seem to be pretty bad at this uh, <laughs> psionic stuff yeah. I didn't choose it, it chose me <laughs> the, the industrial part of the island would would that be where a lot of the Yamaguchi group would be working out of since they primarily work with the construction and stuff or um so the the um the yamaguchi they do a lot of construction um and then they are um like this is this island that you're on right now <clears throat> um we're on hoshina yeah, Hoshima yeah. is kind of like their, you know, base. Oh, okay. Um, they probably work all over the place. They take contracts mm -hmm. on any island, probably, mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So that means that they're probably on good standing with most of the houses out there, then. Most of the, uh, most mm -hmm. of the yeah. political entities. Good. And I That's think good. you, you know... Um, you probably know a lot about just like the different factions around here because you're, you're from here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, like you, you know that uh, Black Lotus is like associated with with drugs and uh, drug manufacture and stuff, and that the Satos are like are associated with like smuggling <laughs> getting stuff on and off the planet and that brings us back uh to astrogen so they developed that uh aerosol rabies which is a bioweapon and bioweapons usually start as drugs so probably they have some connections to the Black Lotus yeah. around here. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I hear Sal uh, telling the group about this local uh, manufacturer of uh, drugs and uh, uh, drugs of all kinds, mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of pointing it out like these guys can probably give us some leads on Astrogen's latest projects. If we can get there and talk with them, probably even intimidate them. We are associates of the house. Sal is one of the main guards of the house. So mm -hmm. well, I'm perhaps we can be like, you know, one of your main clients or one of your main partners is actually causing some shit on this planet. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'm thinking Sal could have talked to maybe some of the construction people. He might, might you know some of them maybe. Mm -hmm. I doubt about if there's any been new facilities going up, anything like that. Would I have any like a, a contact or two that might? Oh, that's right. I think. Do I have a contact? Can I pull? Yeah, you want to use I one of your contacts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see. What did I have as a contact? I wonder if I do. It's going to be the best thing. Inventory. Oh darn it! Where is that located? Under inventory. So everybody on like that kind of has their main kind of base, like on this island, is kind of friendly. And then that is that is going to be the um <clears throat> the uh, the geishas, the Yamaguchi, the uh, Sato family and um the white paper cranes mm -hmm. uh, does this so kind of like look at you guys like um a bit like weirded out and confused because Tessa just puts like um her tablet on the young table 
and just says, like, just quite clearly, uh, are all y'all really trying to take down a company now? I mean, to be fair, all y'all can do whatever you want, but I thought we were getting out of here. Things have went down, like, bad now. I don't want to be anywhere where Astrid knows we are. And as much as a lovely lady as May is, we shouldn't be here. We have already lost too much valuables. There's people that hired from her Astrid, and, or whatever you want to call them now. So in my mind, this is our time just to kick the bucket and get out of here while we still can. Well, how much do we have in the way of resources since... Uh, I mean, we got passage here by working on by uh, with uh, May ship. Are we going to have enough to get off of here by ourselves? And if so, where are we going to go? Uh, if we get the formalized thing on this, maybe get a little bit more working for the, the family. We might have a little bit of money in our pockets to do things. Well, that's great to hear and everything, but last I checked, none of y'all actually asked the um, family for a job. we just been loading off of them. I think they'd really be interested in giving um, loaders their jobs if we don't even know what we're going to be doing. To be quite honest, we could just probably get May to actually leave with us. I mean, she probably has the money and resources to help us, and she's not safe here anymore with the fact that Astrid has a huge mm -hmm. target on her head, it seems. Mm hmm well, like I said, we, we were technically working for her and getting a salary when we were on the ship, but uh, since then, I don't know if we've accumulated anything or not, but... Look, but we just have to get the... We weren't, we're, Look, we weren't losing money either, so... <laughs> Look, Anna, this place is all nice and everything, but I've been in this situation already with you all in the last place, and as you can see, eventually the pot tips over and spills everywhere, like, it might be fine right now, but eventually that thing will blow over, and we'll be in a new situation just like we were with the train. I read um, stop that from happening before it does. My whole thing was being a mechanic to stop problems from machines. Mm. Not having machines cause more of it. Well, like I guess we can certainly talk to May, uh, at least uh, see about if we can get, well... Okay, question, uh, Keeper. Do we have enough to get, without May's help, to get off the planet by ourselves and try hi get hired on some, or do we have to try to hire on some place going off, or what's our financial um, situation now? I would say it's a lot. It would be a lot easier to crew up on this planet because um, not everybody is trying to get off mm -hmm. the planet. Like it's okay. not like. You know, there isn't like rioting and looting mm -hmm. and, um, you know, like the prices of food, like skyrocketing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, if, but um, I think if you, if you ask or, or are you, are you, are you going to, I'm, I'm just trying to see what I about money. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sure Sal must have like a, like kind of know where my, lucrative job boards might be i might have an in or something with that yeah. mm -hmm. because uh, if we could if we could land a decent gig here we could pool up money and then you know then do whatever we want mm -hmm. because i mean as opposed to like just scraping up a ton of money for jumps from system to system to like maybe mm -hmm. get something there's a lot of lucrative opportunities here. And like buying a ship is crazy expensive. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, super, super expensive. But, um, but you could, you know, you could crew up. But if you just, if you do bring up money, you know, with May, um, you could. I mean, because you are like, you're, you know, you're part of her crew. Mm hmm Oh yeah, Maybe. me and I, we go back. Yeah, we're Eastside Trece, man, all the way. <laughs> yeah, basically, um, Tessa stopped thinking now as a tourist, and she's starting to think now as what she is as a traveler. And the fact is, as travelers, she's not supposed to stay in one place for too long because if things start going south, it mm. will be time to go there and rare stop it before it actually goes south. 
And he's kind of looking at you guys a bit crazy because, like, he thinks you're insane. You're trying to take down a company. No, like, that's not no. our job. Because you're talking about, like, how, like, oh, Astrid's doing all this stuff. And she's like, that's none of my business. I don't care what they're doing, like, legally or not. I'm just a traveler. I'm a hired hand. I'm hired by, like, right now, May's crew. That's fine mm -hmm. and good. Mm -hmm. But she just almost got killed. Like, that woman... Yeah. Almost just got shot to death, and now I'm like, this is a fight or like this is a fight or flight mode, and I'm fighting because we aren't yeah. here to handle like the well, job. No, yeah, I, I'm not really necessarily trying to wanting to take on the corporation. What? Uh, but I mean, if that we should keep a little bit of an eye on that because if that damn virus gets out, that could affect us any place we go. Yeah, long story hey. short is um, Tessa doesn't care about the virus or anything that's going on with the company. Tessa doesn't care about the fact of, like, the company is coming here now. So leaving now would be yeah. better because... <laughs> wow. They're, they're, they're putting people in and small, you know, um, so... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how obviously... Actually, they, whole actually they were coming. Actually, they're not coming here. They just... Did a con well, I mean, they maybe came in and, and announced a contract, but that's all they did. So far, the people that have hit us have been the Yahoo locals. The, uh, yeah. that took that took them up on their on their bounty. Yeah, I don't know how obvious it's been through this whole game, but Tessin has only cared about one person and one person only, and that's been herself. And yeah, you guys have just been the people that are her crew. But yeah, if I you understand. guys don't only want to be her crew, it's kind of like, well, we can go our separate ways then, because I'm not going to die with you all. <laughs> I'm, again, I'm not planning on taking on any corporation. I just figure we uh, we might do a little looking around while we're trying to get up enough money to 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 get off of here decently instead of scraping by and doing stuff. I mean, assuming yeah, you want to... beautiful planet with a lot of different technology, a lot of different uh, job opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might be able to line up a real good gig that could then get us off the planet, as opposed to just spending a lot of money to jump out of here for for what a chance. You know, that's that's throwing lots of money away for, you know, maybe something as opposed to there's a lot of opportunity here to make money. Mm -hmm. And then you could have then you could buy your chance. Yeah. Tessa sort of just saw him, like, when um, she put the table on, she slides over to you, Anna, for you to see all the things that have to be paid, because she has, like, actual taxes and debts on, like, other stuff that she has to pay. And she's like, yeah. if you can get me 20,000 creds to help me pay for all this stuff, I might just think about staying with you. But if you can't help me pay off these debts and everything I have, I'm leaving, because I can't stand in a place for too long. It was nice to have a little vacation, but I need money. If we can't get money, what is the point of us being travelers? No, I, I, that makes yeah, sense. I, I agree. Like I said, I wasn't planning on staying, although I, I, I and in some ways I kind of like the planet. I, I certainly wasn't planning on staying here forever, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, we need to, uh, I figured we have, my, my theory was on this is okay, we help out May, we help out the father a little bit, we get ourselves in good. Then we start asking about funds. After mm -hmm. we after we've proven ourselves a little bit, which I think we have, so I also think um we can probably mm -hmm. uh successfully land something. How about so hear me out? So they obviously are smuggling things how about we actually convince them to employ us on a off the planet smuggling operation and we can even take may with us so we can be there we still go. yeah and we can still be um helped financially and i realize this is a little bit of a disgusting behavior but to be fair may is our sugar mommy right now <laughs> right <laughs> So I mean, uh, it's, it's not even disgusting. That's just the truth. Like she is basically um can give us money and everything. She's the mm -hmm. only reason why Tessa's here because like, wait, she actually is a corpo's like daughter. That's just free money right there. Get on exactly. her side yeah. is like the best thing. 
And exactly. she probably will be safer traveling than staying here. I mean, we can probably mm. convince her, not her dad. Mm. Her dad will never agree to it. But um, mm -hmm. no, her well, they're dad. not after. Well, they're not after her daughter. They're after her. So that was the whole thing. Tessa was saying, like, we can just try and like convince her to come with us then, because mm -hmm. since the bounty's on her, getting her off her home planet is probably the best thing for her. Since you know, Until the longer she stays on her, the worse it could be. We could totally sell this to her dad because this is protecting his daughter and we would take good care. I would be an emissary of the planet to, and then the, all of us could be on a crew. They, we could be a subsidized, subsidized travelers, almost privateers for her dad to keep her safe and be making money at the same time. Time, while yeah. things blow over on the planet. Mm -hmm. Or let Tezen like um see that you guys have a destination in mind and rare like to go around it. Tess is gonna say like you guys already are planning like probably leaving at one point to get somewhere else already. So we can just start little and then go bigger by going other places because here's the thing. We are travelers in the game, and travelers, we don't stay in one place for long for the simple fact of we need to make money and make sure that our names get out there because if no one knows what we can do, what's the point of being travelers and everything? Mm. Also, mainly because for her, she just isn't for the money because she needs money to live. Like, I need my, my debts paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, well, first we want to approach uh, uh, May and then make sure the I. The, uh, this idea, and then convince her father. I think I don't. I don't think we'd have too much problem convincing that uh, either one of them. I mean, to be fair, we helped out his daughter and saved her life like three times now. I think we yeah. have a little bit of leeway, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and as he's already saved face by, uh, you know, you know, he said, he said, and people after my daughter, this is what happens to you, you know. So he's already saved face that way. Mm. So we this should approach. Yeah, approach this is an agreement. For... If it means um, money's on, if it means money can be helped, and I don't have to go bankrupt, I'm all for it. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. all she needs to hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we all need careers. We all need some income. So I think this is a great idea, and it keeps I mean, her safe. Bro, I'm an engineer. If I'm not engineering or being a mechanic, what am I use, useful for? That's literally my job. I've been doing none of that. Like, I'm just like, you know what? I I really need an engine to work on right now, buddy. Where's where's the engine at? Mm -hmm. That's how I get my money. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been getting to, I've been able to play around with computers. You haven't had too much of a chance to uh, do the, uh, uh, get your hands dirty with the mechanical portion. I understand that. It's, you got sometimes you got to do what you want, you know, what's what your passion is. Okay, I think that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's we'll try, we'll try, we'll try. We'll try. It's, it's, yeah. time, it's time to see how well it goes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so who you want to who do you want to hit up first, May or? Uh, Akira, the dad. I think it's um, a safe bet to um, go with May first, since you know mm -hmm. yeah. she's our captain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we can get May on board with this plan, then then it's probably going to be a better sell to her dad. And I think it's important to try to pursue her dad because he could effectively bankroll us. And it would make sense for him to do that because we could not only keep her safe, but we could we could engage in in interstellar business for him and his yeah. house for his name. So we would be like an extension, a new money making branch for him, all the while keeping his daughter safe. And we've proven, like you said, we've saved her her rear end several times or you guys have i i was there mm -hmm. a couple times so for that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but you got a good reputation so i don't and selling you is being a solid you know person 
would not be a, would not be hard. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we need to we need a good positive environment for to meet May in. Yeah. So team meeting at the at the buffet. Just hey, oh, yeah, hey buffet. Yes. we uh, we have some Back stuff to the buffet. I want to talk with you about yeah. Like, hey. hey, we're at the buffet. Um, we need to talk to you about some things, you know. Yeah. Um, can you get over here, bestie? <laughs> yeah. Or we so could try to like, like hit her up at. Well, no, we don't want to hit her up at a place where she parties. That's we want her to be halfway serious. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't want her drunk again. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we'll just maybe get a nice room, and meet her up there. Uh, yeah, uh, off the buffet or a nice table. And we'll get us the nicest table or whatever that's semi private and meet her the, and have the meeting there. Yeah. Yeah. Go to a nicer restaurant. I mean, you can just, you can just say at the buffet, but yeah. Um, okay. So you, so you like call up May, tell her that you want to have a little team meeting, a little crew meeting. Um, and she's, you know, she's, oh, sh sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be right there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, comes down to to meet you. Um, so what's up? What's up, crew? What's up, team? Yeah, we got him. We got him, right? Yeah, yeah. We oh yeah. Well, and I mean, I there might be a few more attempts, but uh, uh, that's one of the things we were to talk about. Uh, we've got some restless people here, you know. We're we're travelers, and you you were a pretty damn good captain. We're thinking oh. about well, what if we go off planet and you, your father's already saved face by you know if, if he publicly displays these idiots that you know that uh, tried to kill you that's that's saving face like say, let's see this is what happens when you mess with my family and my daughter um, and we see about uh, us going down in space again maybe hitting up your father as like a branch for I mean like as a um, money making concern for him. With you as the captain and us as the crew, Sal, Sal be your bodyguard. Of course, for the rest of us, we've got the uh, the skills for the ships and stuff like that. I think we made a pretty good team. So, well, I I have something for you. Um, uh, and then she she starts handing out uh, cred sticks, and uh, and then she says, "Most of this is from my dad, but some of it's from me too." Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on each uh, cred stick, there is 55,000 credits. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Tess's, eyes, Tess's eyes go um, wide-eyed cat, and it's like, well, I mean, I guess that solves my debt problem. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's, she says, she says uh, you know, my my dad really appreciates the that you caught those guys and uh and and well there's some of that's for me too okay i appreciate it. i appreciate yeah, it so, uh that sort of generosity uh gets you loyalty even if we didn't like you <laughs> but which we do <laughs> so well, wait you think uh you think we just keep moving like we we don't let them uh catch up to us uh yeah yeah, that's what that's mm. what, what we were thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, man, I'm you. gonna be crap. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, look, man, I'm gonna be crap. Where were you? Uh, mm -hmm. you almost lost your life out there. That just comes with the whole job. I told you. But even with that said, you're not safe here anymore. Your own home has been turned against you. Since Astrid's trying out for your head now, I mean, they have a whole debt and, and like, bounty for six million creds. Anyone else or jobless can come get you. Staying here isn't safe anymore. Even if it is your home. Six million credits? Yep. Ooh, I don't like that. I mean, I guess it... I'm I'm glad it's not higher, but it's still. Uh, this it's, cool. it's not that high, but enough mercenaries out there will be interested to mm -hmm. get it. 
You just got yeah. some no jobbers this time. Who knows who else can get hired by Astrid? And it, it makes sense. That's a very good point, Tess, that it's six million. It's a lot for for local thugs, but this might be another good reason to go off planet because going off planet is expensive and six million starts depreciating a lot once you start hopping around out there. So if if we go off world, that would all of a sudden make that six million not seem all that lucrative anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, if they can't find this, they can't cash in my chips. That's true. Well, I guess I should That's ask. True. Well, I guess the first thing I should ask then, and um, Tess just puts out like um some of their like um equipment, everything, and um, she shows like her um you know her phone, everything, and, and then she um smashes it. I think this is a good thing to do right now by keeping ourselves and everything else we have previously destroyed and buy some new stuff. If you all catch my drift. So they can't track us as easily. I've had this phone since I've been with you all uh, six months ago in that planet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to now make sure that this thing can't be tracked by anyone. Yeah, we can get you new, new equipment. That's no problem. You have no idea how many times I had to put in that fucking captain's number. Captain Turk does not know all the shit I have to go through buying new phones. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say before you go is, can you get that that's the amount that you that you owe sent off by that phone or wired off by that phone, and then then um, after you receive acknowledgement, then destroy it. She just wanted a new phone. She just like like <laughs> took the SIM card out, you know. Yeah, you can get the new iPhone five thousand. Nah, like, yeah, guys, now, the new iPhone 655 is out. I have to get it. <laughs> and now, and now the true, the true horror uh, is to actually the, get you the, the new uh, You want the Android uh, uh, 5000? <laughs> no, nah, the Android, Android Mecca. They yeah. stopped using numbers at this point. You know, uh, I was just using yeah, like Mecca, um, yeah. Asteroid signs. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a real Android. Like um, follows you around. <laughs> it's a little Android phone with feet and hands. That you can hold your drinks for you while you watch videos. <laughs> I said, well, I I think it's I think it's a good plan. I mean, because I thought if I I guess I thought if I just stayed around the casino, you know that that they would, you know, they get they they would figure out that I wasn't leaving the casino, and I thought I'd just get drunk with my friends, but they keep trying to kill me. So maybe and let's face it. You're gonna you go stir crazy after a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if we took the um the Zunsu though, um it would still have a transponder on it, so they would still know it was my ship, but maybe can we, can we get your father to like um assign you to another ship? Well, could we get the transponder um... number? Okay, yeah, we get correct. the signal transfer out of it and then replace it with something else. We can always try and do that. Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of like being the captain too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, yeah, maybe. I feel like if we were on somebody else's ship, I wouldn't be the captain anymore. No, no, well, no. I, I don't mean if if he have, I mean, get another a new ship of the new ship of your, the line, so to speak, and then make you captain of that and make somebody else the thing of the thing too. Yeah. Yeah, you could transition. Yeah. You could go in as an alias and then come out as captain of the new ship. You could get like a haircut. <clears throat> yeah, you can get the pseudonym like Miss Information. It can play very well <laughs> into our plan to completely uh, drive every follower off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, you talk me into it. Um, okay, let's talk to my dad. Yeah, just gives a big pat on like um, Maze Bag and says, "See, now you're talking my style." All right, I'm sure Dad will agree to this too. I mean, if he loves you and everything and cares about your life, of course he wants you to be alive and happy and far away from this planet as possible. You know, just saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he I'm did also what you had in, for... mm -hmm. uh, he Sorry, did what yeah. you had in space. So I mean, I think he obviously trusted you for the captaincy of this of a, of a, of a ship, anyway. So. Yeah, I just I like the Zun suit. The Zun suit is like super fast and it's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, can we crack the transponder and and uh, get a new one in? I know that's yeah. illegal, but this this. Uh... Well, if it gets rechristened the new ship, uh, I mean, if, if you transferred ownership, say for example, somebody sold the ship to somebody else, wouldn't you be putting on a new trans transponder code anyway? Because mm -hmm. it would be for owned by a different person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that well, my dad would probably know. He probably know how to. He knows about. That. That kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah yeah i just work on engines i don't know anything about the techno stuff of like chips i just thought you could just remove them and mm. that's probably not a good idea so i've got a ship running without a transponder code of any sort is uh signal that hey we're up to something they won't let you out of the system Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. We definitely need a, a transponder, just not necessarily the that original. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You talked me into it. <laughs> Goodbye, Suto. Hello, Rust Bucket. <laughs> so, uh, oh. do you want to you want to talk to uh, Akira? Papa. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. To Papa. Time to talk to Papa. Yeah. Father. Oh, father. <laughs> father, I require sustenance. <laughs> so um so when you you see um Akira, you know, he says he says, um sorry, I didn't I didn't thank you earlier for for everything. Um did May page you? Yes, 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 you did. That was quite generous, sir. Good. Thank you. Good. Yeah, and I'll pay you 100000 for any other would-be assassin that tries to kill her. Okay. Well, that, that would be good. Um, how do we have a proposal that might uh, keep that from happening in the future? You've already sent your message, or I'm assuming you're sending your message shortly, by dumping these people out and saying, see, here's what happens when you go after my daughter. So I uh, you it's like you're like you more than safe face on this. But I think now might be a good time to get May off the planet again. And I'll roll out loud our proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if he has any suggestions, and if he has any suggestions, you know, that might uh, cater more to his needs, that sort of thing like that. Actually, by her being here. In the casino, she's putting the rest of us in danger, the rest of her, her family, because they can take a, take vengeance on us as well, according mm -hmm. to our rules. So right. the farther she is from the casino, from here, mm -hmm. the better. And, and May is just kind of like hanging her head. You know? <laughs> like, uh, um, well, it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad plan at all. We just keep her moving for a while until all this uh, we get all this sorted out. Maybe I can work something out with uh, with Astrogen. Uh, maybe if I keep sending their assassins home in body bags, then uh, they'll uh, they'll give up. I'm mm -hmm. not paying them a billion credits for that installation. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to start sending a few assassins their way. That's kind of where I where I'm at right now. Well, I'm sure you've got people that are much better at that than we would be. But, I mean, well, we've, we've stepped up somewhat when we've stepped up when we had to as much as possible. But you know, that's you know, you got a computer, uh, computer person, electronics, mechanic. Um, uh, Lucas is kind of our general uh, troubleshooting, that sort of thing like that. So, yeah, Sal's a good, he's a good, um, he's a good protector, yeah. you know. 
He's a good pilot. And a good pilot. Yeah, a pilot. good driver. Pilot. You know, we have a, we have an actual driver now, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh well, she's uh, um, Anna has, has got a decent amount, and let's see what. Uh, He's got a little two uh, spacecraft and a like mm -hmm. one one a small craft, but you know, well. yeah, May is uh she's not a bad pilot herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and also when we're out, when we're out there, we're we're not just keeping her safe. Uh that we could also keep an eye out for interstellar business opportunities for you if you choose to expand mm -hmm. there i mean so down the road this could be like an investment i mean straight up safety for for may but the side benefit could be future expansion for you i mean this this could be a great opportunity mm -hmm. exactly and if nothing else for your eyes and ears you know So, I mean, uh, I mean would, I, would you take no, the Zansu? Yeah, we'd, um, we would, uh, we're thinking more of a transfer to a new name so that a new transponder code could be inserted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easily done. Yeah. Also, you know, it probably is good for your, um, you know, daughter to actually see what the real world's like. No, it was hard for me the first time learning what it was all about, but it's a good practice for her if she ever like you know takes over your, for your company at one point. May no playing pirate this time. You're laying low. Remember. <laughs> oh, don't worry, old daddy. Dears. And I put um, uh, uh, arm over arm, <laughs> May and shake her a bit, and <laughs> I'll make sure she sticks to the rules. After all, I'll, I've had six of them for at least ten years now. Mm. Hey, there's yeah, a lot of business stuff out there that she can do that'll take advantage of her, of her skills so actually uh first rule of um Tessin's guide to learn the rules don't touch my stuff me and even if um it's in the um, way of something don't touch it it's there for a reason <laughs> i give her a big smile <laughs> yeah try and keep her away from the uh dance clubs and well maybe just hole in the wall bars for a while mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't want anybody uh any paparazzi uh no fun allowed <laughs> so actually the hole in the wall things would probably be better because the paparazzi would be um at the places that everybody who's anybody goes to so a little hole in the yeah. wall when everyone's well probably wouldn't hurt. And no uh no posting your locations or selfies, none of yeah. that. You're laying low. Yeah. The may just kind of like she's just like, yes, dad, you know, like hang her head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I get you guys are kind of throwing a wrench in my uh my yeah, story. I know. But uh, I I'm sorry, dude. I made um testing to be a traveler, and traveler's whole thing is like get the fuck out of here before things go south. That's kind mm -hmm. of like our job. <laughs> um do you wanna do you wanna let me do a little bit of prep? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I mean 